Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm finally going to be able to rank all eight of the Transformers Studio Series Constructicons. Here you can see an image of the final fully completed Transformers Studio Series Devastator and I thought that this would be an awesome image to open on with this ranking video as subsequently when you do collect all eight of these figures this is the result that you're left with. An incredibly highly awaited figure and to me it really did live up to the hype. It is a really good looking Studio Series Devastator. I definitely recommend that you should check out the review if you haven't done so already. But back now to the actual ranking for the Constructicons. Devastator will not feature on this list seeing as he's more of a combiner and an end result of all of the Constructicons put together. So in this video I'll be merely ranking from 8th spot to the 1st spot as there is 8 Constructicons. There being 4 Voyagers, 2 Leaders and 2 Deluxe Class figures. So without further ado, let's kick this off and start with my number 8th pick. Taking the 8th spot and being my least favourite Transformers Studio Series Constructicon has to go to the Deluxe Class Scrap Metal. Scrap Metal, if I'm not mistaken, was the second release from the Constructicon lineup. And personally, even when we first got official images and in hand images of this character, I really was not looking forward to his release at all. I'm not entirely sure whether that's down to his incredibly bland design when compared to some of the other Constructicons or whether it's down to the fact that we never really see Scrap Metal in the movie, so I don't necessarily have any attachment to his character. Another reasoning what behind why I don't particularly like this figure is because he's very basic in terms of his design. There isn't that much sculpted in detailing like we see with the majority of the Studio Series figures, and to me he almost feels more like a cartoonish type character, and not one that you would put in the Bayverse. Another reason behind why I don't particularly like the character is because I think he makes one of the weakest Devastator limbs out of the entire 8 lineup of Constructicons, seeing as he only forms three fingers and part of the hand, which you then subsequently have to merge with Hightower, and it makes this really ugly looking abomination. Check out my Studio Series Devastator review, and you will see how I compare it to what Scrapper actually creates, and it is a very different outcome. So personally, I do think this is the weakest out of these eight figures. However, I've got to give credit where credit is due. This figure is made out of incredibly sturdy plastic, some of the best plastic quality that I've ever seen on these Studio Series figures, and the transformation is actually quite enjoyable to go from robot mode into his vehicle mode and his devastator limb mode isn't all that difficult to transform up either. Personally for me, whilst it may not be a terrible figure, I just think that taking in that this figure isn't as detailed as the other Constructicons, he isn't very poseable either, you can't really get him into any dynamic poses and he doesn't really come with any weapons, I've very quickly come to the conclusion that this is my least favourite Constructicon to date. Taking the 7th spot on my Constructicon list has to go to the Studio Series Deluxe Class Hightower. Now don't get me wrong, when this figure was first unveiled way back in 2019's New York Toy Fair, I actually thought this was one of the most intriguing and interesting Constructicon or just Decepticon designs in general. This took an original concept idea and adapted it into a plastic format, which I think was really interesting as it was kind of the first time Hasbro had ever really delved into concept characters for the Studio Series line. However, I've got to base my opinion in this ranking video on what figures I've found myself messing around with the most, and Hightower I really haven't picked up and transformed and posed around that much either, and I think that's mainly due to his design. Now don't get me wrong, I think the design is really well done, it's very unique, very original, he's almost this T-Rex Constructicon like Decepticon, and I think that the head sculpt is brilliant. But the articulation, although he has got loads of different joints in the legs, there's really not much you can do with him as he doesn't really have any articulation in the arms and he really just doesn't pose right. I even had difficulties posing him in this particular pose as I just couldn't think of any imaginative ways to display this figure. Also, the transformation on this figure is very simplistic as well and to be honest with you, it's actually quite boring. There really isn't much engineering that goes into it, which could be a bad thing or a good thing depending on if you prefer your Transformers more complicated or less complex, but with all things set aside, I know it may seem as if though I'm hating on the two deluxe class figures from this line because they are perhaps the smallest, but believe me, it's not that at all, it's just that I haven't found myself having really any attachment to them, and that could be down to the reason that neither of these actually appeared in the movie, so I haven't really got that much inspiration in taking photos with them, messing around with them, or indeed transforming them. With all that being said though, Hightower is a really nice addition on the shelf, and as I stated, he is one of the more original Constructicon design. And taking the sixth spot has to go to the Studio Series Long Haul. Now this is where things got really difficult for me, as these next six figures are really well done, and I've actually found myself enjoying each and every one of them, 
basically just the same as one another. However, as this is a ranking video, I have had to find some flaws with some certain figures, and Long Haul, out of the next few, was one that suffered with the most flaws. Most noticeably was his lack of articulation. Now, I know that's down to the agility and the actual design of Long Haul. He's more of a chunky character than rather your more agile. However, I have found myself being very limited in terms of what I can do for posing options. This was really the most dynamic pose I could get this particular character in, which, as I stated, isn't a drawback really and truly at all. It's just that he isn't as articulated and as dynamic as some of the other figures on the list. But in terms of movie accuracy, he is fantastic. One of the best looking studio series figures out there. I think the detail is mesmerising. He's a major step up from his rather rare counterpart that we got in 2009, the original Voyager class long haul. So it's great to see Hasbro really taking note of some of those ILM files and really getting the details down to a T. I think that the figure is painted really nicely as well. There's definitely enough paint variation. I do like the green plastic that they've used too. It looks very authentic to what we saw in the movie. And the head sculpt is beautiful. All the mandibles that you can see within his mouth, the exquisitely painted eyes just a really well done figure and the transformation isn't all that difficult either getting him from his robot mode into his dumpster truck mode which also has some problems i don't think that the truck bed is as clean as perhaps they could have got it but seeing as this transforms into a limb of devastator i know compromises had to be made and transforming him from the truck mode into the devastator limb once again is fairly straightforward so as a whole this is a very solid voyager just not probably my favorite out of them all and definitely there are a few more on this list that definitely appeal to me a lot more than long haul did taking the fifth spot on my list goes to the studio series leader class scavenger one of the figures that i believed was most in need of an upgrade over his original 2009 counterpart and it was a very similar situation to the 2007 black owl that figure was rather good however it just needed to be bigger and the same here goes for scavenger originally we got a very small voyager and in the movie scavenger slash demolisher was a huge character so really always needed to be put in the leader class assortment and finally the studio series answered our prayers and gave him a much more substantially bigger figure to go better in terms of scale with some of your other Transformers. Whilst he may not be 100% accurate in terms of scale, seeing as that character in the movie was so big, I think that it's a really nice compromise and his robot mode looks very, very well done. The head sculpt truly is remarkable. I think that that is where the studio series really excels, is in the level of detailing of these head sculpts. They look just like they did in the movie, and I think that he has a great distribution of paint. The darker gunmetal for the top of the head, the yellow eyes, the more blackish colour scheme in the mouth, and then some silver mandibles, all mixed in with the red plastic, really does draw your attention directly to the face seeing as he is a rather obscure design in terms that he does just roll around on wheels i think that they've done a good job in distributing some of the parts and not making areas look too clunky i think that the arms are quite well articulated and i do actually like that the wheel he does in fact balance on is in fact able to be rolled around if you wish to have played with this figure and he almost has a sort of waist articulation joint too which is super cool to see the only reasoning behind why he is slightly lower on the list very similarly to long haul is that you can't really get this figure into too many poses and there really isn't all that much you can do with him other than just balance him on his two legs or make him look as if though he's charging through the city of Shanghai like I've tried to illustrate in this particular shot. The transformation for him too isn't as easy as I would have liked. There are definitely a lot of twists and turns that have to be taken and you do find yourself almost getting confused as to what part is supposed to rotate and then when we finally get him into the construction vehicle I really think that the leader classes suffer in terms of their compromises as their construction vehicles don't seem to be as clean and tidy as some of the other constructor cons as his vehicle mode is left with a lot of hollow spaces However, I can see the exceptions that had to be taken in order to get him to transform into the robot, the truck mode, as well as the devastator limb mode. And personally, just as long as they always nail the robot modes, I'm probably more than likely going to be suffice with it. This was a great step up from his original Voyager class. However, there are other figures on this line that I do prefer over Scavenger. Now, taking the fourth spot on my list goes to the Studio Series Leader Class Overload. Now, this is where things got really difficult for me, as I actually found myself enjoying this figure in an incredibly short Short amount of time. I've only really had this figure now for about three weeks and I have found myself really enjoying his overall design. I think that this is a great example of Hasbro taking reference from some source material, some original concept ideas and making an almost compromise. This doesn't have the four scorpion leg look that the majority of us believed he would. However, I think that they've done such a good job in sticking very closely to that original concept design and I think that's why this figure is so successful. As if you look at Scrap Metal and Hightower, some of the designs that they've 
helicopter to take with those are quite different from the original concept designs whereas I think Overload definitely looks as if though he could have been in the Michael Bay movies and I think his design is fantastic. The four arms that he has with all these different claws and tendrils look super menacing and intimidating. His head sculpt is very compressed and very intimidating as well. I love the mechanical detailing within his torso and the articulation that he actually has considering he is rather obscure is actually really well done as well. I was really surprised with the articulation in Overload's legs. He has got ankle rocker joints, the legs have articulated at the knees, he's got spikes that come out from the knees. Just a really well done figure and the ratchet joints for the hips of Devastator really do help you get this figure into some great poses in robot mode. I just found myself really enjoying the overall design of this character in his robot mode. However, as I have to factor in all of the elements, his vehicle mode very similarly to Scavenger does let him down ever so slightly, just as there has been compromises had to be made, and I don't necessarily think that his combined form is too interesting either. It's more of a piece in bringing all of the limbs together, so it doesn't necessarily look the most eye appealing, but it is the central component that you will need in order to bring Devastator together, and I've got to be honest with you, they definitely did save one of the best constructor cons for last. Taking the third spot on my list goes to the newly released Transformers studio series Voyager class scrapper. Now when this figure was first unveiled at this year's Wonder Festival, I did very quickly state that this could potentially be my favourite Constructicon. It's definitely not my favourite, but it is up there as you can see it has taken third place and that's because the design is so well done. You can see here that I have based this scene on the one scene that we actually see Scrapper in the movie and that's when he is attacking Sam and Michaela using his mace whip and really as soon as I saw that clip I was really intrigued with his design as he looks very alien. I think that he's got a very almost snake like head design with it being very thin and very slender and you've got the very small slits in the eyes as well with the red paint applications to make him look very menacing. I think that the robot mode proportions are quite nicely done as well and I think that the way the transformation works truly is remarkable. The way the legs transform and you get the wheels that fold up in the lower region of his feet, very very well done and very good use of using vehicle mode parts. I do hear that his vehicle mode isn't accurate however as a construction vehicle I think that it works reasonably well enough and it definitely does blend in with the other constructor cons and I think that his devastator limb mode that being one of the arms to devastator is vastly superior than that of the scrap metal and high tower combo as stated in my review just overall this figure is really well done the details great I think that he's got a good range of articulation specifically in the upper torso as we begin to go down to the lower region it doesn't get as articulated as perhaps I would have liked it to have done but Scrapper definitely gets the job done and is a prime example of a very good modern day Studio Series Voyager class. And now taking the runner up spot in second place has got to go to the Transformers Studio Series Voyager class Mixmaster. If you had watched my review of this particular release way back in December, I very quickly stated that I was so happy to have been getting a Voyager class Mixmaster in the Studio Series lineup as his design resonated with me so well when I first saw it in the Revenge of the Fallen movie and the original Voyager class that we got in 2009 up until this release quite frankly was one of my best Voyager figures in the movie line of all time. I absolutely loved that figure. The one thing that I didn't necessarily like about it so much was that the transformation was one of the more involved which I do like involved transformations but believe me I used to dread transforming that. This figure here I strongly believe manages to capture the same level of high-end movie accurate detailing with a much more simpler transformation but gets the job done as just as effective as that. I think that his robot mode looks fantastic. I love how all of the different cement components become almost a shield for his arms. Unfortunately they're not articulated much like they were on the original version however I do think that's probably a cost cutting measure taken by Hasbro as essentially this figure is a triple changer. Whilst on the topic of triple changing he doesn't turn into the gun mode however I think that having him turn into the devastator head is a far more appealing third mode for me and I think that his truck mode is sublime. I cannot pick any faults with his vehicle mode whatsoever so overall this was just such a well accepted figure by me. I think that he's really well done. I also think his colour scheme is a lot more accurate to the movie than what we got with the original version. The only thing that's lacking for this particular release for me would be the inclusion of having Decepticon insignias on the cement mixing chamber. 
And so here we have it, my number one pick for the best Transformers Studio Series Constructor Con, the Studio Series Voyager Class Rampage. I would never have thought that Rampage would be my favourite Constructor Con. However, he was the first Constructor Con to be released for the Studio Series and really set the bar for the future releases. I have found myself absolutely loving this figure and I think it's for a couple of reasons. The first reason was that I never really had the original version of Rampage slash Skipjack in the 2009 movie. However, I did very recently get that deluxe figure and it is awful. So this is a major step up when compared to that figure. He's now in the Voyager class line rather than the deluxe class line. And I just think the level of movie accurate detailing is fantastic. He looks so well done and all the paint applications really help to amplify the sculpt. I also think that the main reason why he is so well accepted by me was because the original red version of Rampage, I believe was the Takara exclusive, which was really, really elusive. So to get this much more movie accurate red version of Rampage, definitely satisfied my collecting needs and getting back to the level of detail that they have taken with this it's full of sculpting and detailing even down to the small danger stickers near where Rampage's shoulders would be. I think the head sculpt too is really well done and considering that he is rather obscure of the character design I think that his articulation too is rather well executed in this release as well. He also does include accessories such as detachable smokestacks from the vehicle mode that you can peg into the hands in order to recreate his blasters. I also like the inclusion of including a display base with him so he doesn't have any difficulty standing and just overall such a well nice looking figure. A rather simplistic transformation from robot mode to vehicle mode and vehicle mode 2 is very very solid and very accurate to the film and I think that his devastator foot mode could possibly be the best devastator limb that we've got out of these eight figures. I really think that's a very solid look for devastator and the foot is very convincing. If this figure does anything more for me is get me extremely excited for the new release of of the Transformers Studio Series Skipjack, which takes this figure and gives us a repainted version in the yellow color scheme to give us a more accurate Studio Series Devastator. So there you have it, my top pick for the eight Constructor Con figures released by the Studio Series. So that's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching my Transformers Studio Series ranking video of all eight of the Constructor Cons that when combined form the mighty Studio Series Devastator. As stated throughout this entire video, I have done reviews on all eight of these Constructor Cons, which can now be watched via my Studio Series Devastator playlist, as well as you can also watch my fully completed in-depth review of the Studio Series Devastator figure itself. I have thoroughly enjoyed taking a look at each of these eight releases over this 18 month period. I cannot thank you enough for staying tuned and staying loyal to my channel and keeping up to date with all of my latest videos. I really do hope that you enjoyed this ranking video and if you did like it please do let me know down in the comment section below and also be sure to let me know what your ranking is for each of these eight constructor cons. I hope that you enjoyed this video and until my next video I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.